I'm so excited about this series that we're in, Back to the Basics, Wisdomology 101, and in this part, part two, we're going to dig down on order. This is exciting, so we need the Holy Spirit's help. Let's pray right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you, Lord. Thank you for being here with us, giving us eyes to see, ears to hear, Lord, giving us insight into God's Word and unfolding it for us so we can apply it to our lives right now. In Jesus' name, amen. In part one, just a quick little review. Remember, we talked about how that wisdom is the principal thing. It's the highway of pleasantness, right? Everything in life needs a foundation. If you ever planted a tree, if you ever noticed when you buy the tree, the job isn't done, you got to plant the tree in some principle, the ground. It needs to have a support. If you built a house, you know you got to Plant the house on some kind of foundation. And wisdom is the principal thing. It's the container for the hot stuff. You saw how Pam was trying to give me my tea. And every time I put my hand out, she was so good to give me my Earl Grey tea. But there it was scalding my hand because the principle was missing. We need the cup. We need the container, the walls, the boundaries to hold the good stuff in our lives. And right now, as we get into part two, we're going to unload and we're going to, I want to kick you off first with Proverbs 4 verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Remember that? Therefore, get wisdom. Who does it? We do it. We get wisdom. And in all of our getting, we get understanding. So we will continue to feature the book of Proverbs throughout this series. And you know, you know, I love the book of Proverbs. I mean, all of God's word I love, but Proverbs, that's one of my favorites. Ever since I've been a boy, Proverbs has meant so much to me because, you know, growing up without a dad, every time I would read it, I always say, my son, I want you to learn this. And it was like God saying, call him me, Stephen, his son. And I just... I loved it. Every time I heard it, I was like, what do you got to say to me, Father? Bring it on. So we're going to dig down more into Proverbs, and we're going to learn more about wisdom as we get into Wisdomology 101, Part 2. And in this segment, let's build. Let's build together. Let's talk about how wisdom builds. You see, wisdom is the master builder. Wisdom is the architect of life. Wisdom is an engineer of all true solutions. Do you need a solution in your life right now? Do you need an answer to a problem that seems unsolvable? Wisdom is the answer. God will not do anything. Did you know that God won't do anything but that he possesses wisdom first? He won't create anything without the help of wisdom. You know, I have a friend who's a builder. And I, and I really, I have to confess, I honestly love watching the process of a building go up. It's interesting that when people buy a house, they're often attracted to the finishes, you know, the colors and things like the appliances and even the knobs. Oh, honey, you got to see these knobs. These knobs are just amazing. Oh, I like that stovetop and that tile is just trending right now. And don't you just love these brass poles, right? We have all seen that. We've all seen it on HGTV. I mean, I've seen it in real life. People get excited about their little poles. But the critical thing is the invisible thing. Say that with me. The critical thing is the invisible thing. The foundation, the thing that people don't look at, the people that, thing that people really don't even seem to care about, the integrity proper drainage in a house, the engineering of a structure, the stuff that you don't see, that's the stuff that's vital to a good build. That's the thing that makes it last, that makes it safe for you and your family. Let's look at what Jesus said about building. Take a look at Luke chapter 6, verses 47 and 48. He said this, For everyone who comes to me and listens to my words, remember what we said about words, the word of God is the wisdom of God. So everyone who comes to me, Jesus said, and listens to my words in order to heed their teaching and does them, I will show you what that person is like. He's like a man or a woman building a house who dug down deep and laid a foundation upon the what? The rock. And when a flood arose, the torrent broke against that house. It could not shake or move it because it had been securely built or founded on a rock. I would like to tell you this. Storms come. Storms are always coming. Floods come. Droughts come. Famines come. Difficult times come. 
The prophet said, when you go through the fire. He didn't say, if you go through the fire. He said, when you go through the fire. He said, when you go through the deep waters, through the troubled places, through the valley of the shadow of death, when you go through. Look, you need more than just a good feeling and you need more than just an opinion. You need the wisdom of God to build your life upon. Jesus said, when you hear his words, his wisdom, and you apply it to your life, you're building on an unshakable rock. Wow, that's beautiful. Let me tell you the story of this older carpenter who had worked for a building contractor for many, many years. He was getting a retirement age now, and he announced to the owner, the contractor, his plans to retire, and he wanted to enjoy more time with his wife and family. He said he'd missed the paycheck, but he felt it was just the right choice. The contractor was very sorry to see this guy go because he was such a good employee. The contractor asked the elder car elderly carpenter, he said, would you build just one more house for me as a personal favor, just one more house? The old timer, he agreed, but soon it became apparent that his heart just wasn't in his work at all anymore. He began to do really sloppy work. It wasn't like him. He used inferior materials. He never did that. He started cutting corners. He never did that. It was an unfortunate way to end what was otherwise a very dedicated career. And when the carpenter finished his work, the contractor walked in and he inspected the house. And when the contractor had finished, he shocked the old carpenter who was just standing there watching him. He turned around and he smiled and he handed the front door key to the old man and he said, this is my gift to you. This is now your house. It's my retirement gift to you and your wife. Oh, can you just imagine how shocked that elderly carpenter must have been? Now, here's the moral of the story. Every day, you and I, we're living in a do-it-yourself project. We're making something. Wisdom tells us that we are building our life, our house, our home with every choice we make. The decisions you make today will always be the life you live in tomorrow. You know Galatians 6, 7 says this. It says, don't be deceived. The wood you cut today will be the house you live in tomorrow. That's my, my translation of uh, Galatians 6, 7. You know Galatians 6, 7 says, what you sow, that and that only is what you will reap. But in this analogy, don't be deceived. The wood you cut today will be the house you live in tomorrow. You know, Galatians 6 verse 9 says this, let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. See, I think the old timer got a little discouraged in doing good. And you know what? The race isn't over until the race is over. Galatians 6 tells us, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't relax your grip of courage, but keep doing good for at the proper time you will reap. And when somebody hands you the keys to the house, make sure that you've cut the wood straight. Make sure you've nailed every board. You've done everything that you can do to build. So let's consult wisdom on building for good, for life, how to build anything right. Here's what Proverbs 24 verses 3 and 4 says. Through skillful and godly wisdom, a house, a life, a home, a family is built. And by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. Verse 4, and by knowledge, its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You see, we're not just talking about constructing a house or a bridge, are we? We're talking about building a life. A home, a career, a marriage, a profession. We're talking about building your business, building your future, building your children up in the things of the Lord. That's what we're talking about. You need wisdom, you need understanding, and you need knowledge. But there is an order. Did you see that in Proverbs 24? First you get wisdom, then you get understanding, and then you get knowledge because knowledge fills the rooms. But, you know, a lot of times we're chasing the filling of the rooms and we don't even have the rooms yet. We don't have the containers. I grew up without a dad, so I never really saw a marriage work. To be honest with you, I was very, very nervous about getting married. I was in love with Pam. We had courted and I felt like I knew in my heart the Holy Spirit was saying, she's the right girl. She's the one you're supposed to marry. But I didn't want to fail. And most of the marriage I had seen either around me were just either sad or broken or had failed. 
Even in the ministry, I had seen a lot of marriages fail. And God was telling me as I read this verse, he said, son, wisdom's the key. It's not how good I was or how good I could perform as a man or as a husband. It was about me holding on the wisdom. Wisdom would build the house. God was telling me if I would get wisdom, wisdom would give me a foundation that could not be shaken. And then secondly, God was telling me through this verse, son, there's an order. First you get wisdom, then you get understanding, and then you get knowledge. And I felt like God was saying, keep repeating that order, that one, two, three, over and over, and you will have a sound, solid, beautiful, love-filled marriage all the days of my life. You know what? God's been doing it. For a boy that never saw a marriage work growing up, God's been revealing things and mysteries that even other marriages are coming to Pam and me saying, how do you do that? Did you know that God is a God of order? Even when he created things in Genesis 1, he did everything in a sequence. Check this out. When we read Psalm 37, 23, it's a famous verse. I'm going to read it to you first in King James. Listen to this. The steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord and God delights in his or her way. One more time. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and God delights in his way. You see, when we're submitted to God, God actually orders. He one, two, threes your steps. Isn't that beautiful? I want to read it to you in the Amplified because it kind of blows it up a little bit more. Psalm 37, 23 in the Amplified. The steps of a good man, a good woman, are directed and established by the Lord. When God delights in that person's way, God himself will busy himself with every step they take. Can you just imagine that? You're walking along and you're walking in God's plan and by his directives, wisdom saying, hey, take this step, Stephen. And every time I take a step that wisdom directs me on, God himself busies himself with my step and says, okay, we can work with that. We'll do this. We'll do this. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that what you want? God busying himself with your every step. Now, look, if you contrast that and you go the opposite way of wisdom, you don't want God busying himself with your step because you don't want him prospering you walking off a cliff. If anything, you want God saying, ho, ho, come on, repent, turn away. Don't go that way. So let's define order. In the context of what we're talking about, see, order doesn't sound really like amazing. It doesn't sound like this phenomenal word, but it is so powerful. Let's define order. Order is a sequence of steps, lines, boundaries with a defined goal, purpose, and reward. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. God's wisdom always brings order. It immediately divides and establishes the boundaries. Remember in Genesis 1, God would say, let there be light. Now notice when he would give his word, his word of order, immediately there would be light and then God would divide the light from the darkness. Then God would say, let there be earth. And immediately the earth would divide from the waters. See, that's how God does things. He gives his word and his word brings order. It brings separation, boundaries, borders, divisions, because without the boundaries and the borders and the divisions, that order, you cannot have the good stuff. So wisdomology 101 is like a staircase. Imagine a staircase. We're walking into a house and, and it's got a second floor. It's a beautiful house and it's got nice high ceilings, let's say 10 feet, maybe even 12 feet ceilings, just beautiful home, high-end home. And the, the owner says, you know what? The view from the second floor is amazing. Come on, you got to come up with me. But there's no staircase. Can you imagine that? There's no staircase to the second floor. Some of you right now, you've got dreams and you feel like your dreams are saying, come on up but you don't see the staircase. You see no way of getting to the next level, to the next floor. My friend, wisdomology is the staircase. But now don't get offended and walk away when you see the simple steps. See, remember Psalm 37, God orders our steps. And I've seen too many Christians, they get, you know, they know that God's given them this dream that's at a whole nother level. And God says, welcome, come on. And God shows them the first step and they're like, well, that's not the next level. That's just a simple step. Oh, my friend, obedience. 
God's looking for your obedience. I know some people that think it's way more interesting to try to sacrifice and, and do the splits and get to the next level, but it's inhumanly possible. You can't do it. So don't be offended with God's simple obedient steps, wisdom's simple obedient steps to the next level. Wisdomology is one simple step after another. The step is not the goal, but part of the process. I've seen so many believers, they get offended with the process. I remember one time a pastor friend of mine, a woman came in, she had a, a huge debt that just landed on her plate and uh, it was something like $2,500. And she was saying, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a single mom. I can't pay for this. My job only pays me this much. On and on she was going. And so my friend, he, he opened up his drawer, pulled out a checkbook, and he wrote her a check. And he folded it, put it on the desk. And she's got tears. And so she opens up the check, and she looks at it. And it was a check for $1,500. Not the whole amount, but $1,500. She looked at him, she wrinkled up her face, threw it across the desk. She goes, what am I going to do with that? Process. Process. If she would have just been thankful, received it, she would have only owed another $1,000. If she would have just received it, who knows who was waiting in the parking lot? Maybe somebody else with a $500 check. Who knows what was waiting for her tomorrow morning? Maybe the full $1,000. God works through process, steps. He's taking you to the next level. God promises us a garden, and then guess what He does? He gives us seeds and ground. God promises you a family, and then guess what He does? He gives you seeds of love and faithfulness and expects you to sow it in the right ground. God promises you promotion, and then guess what He does? He gives you seeds one, seed two, seed three, step one, two, three. My friend, see, that's called the wisdom of God, the order of God. Wisdomology 101. The goal, the secret is in those steps. God's teaching us as he's moving us to the next level. So why is it we celebrate order one minute, but then we disrespect God's order in the very next minute, right? So let me show you what I mean. Let, let me make you a peanut butter and jam sandwich, something that's just so basic. And let me get my lovely assistant here, Pam. Pam is coming right now, even as we speak, my lovely assistant, to make a peanut butter and jam sandwich. And I want you to understand, order is critical. It's essential. And it's kind of built into our culture and our life. And a lot of times we practice order in these simple things. And then we come to God and we're like, yeah, I, I just I disrespect your order, God. I have no interest in your one, two, three. You said one, two, three. I'm actually more interested in three, two, one. But you know what? Yet in life, in the principles of things, we, a lot of times, you know, I learned to make a peanut butter and jam sandwich when I think I was about five. And, and, and it was a process. I, you know, when I think back to it, it didn't just happen overnight. I kind of learned as I went, and it was important. So let's say I got all the tools here. I got the knife. I got some jam. I got some peanut butter. I got some bread. I even got a napkin to kind of, you know, because I don't like eating without a napkin. You know that. Yes, I so, that. <laughs> <laughs> so Pam, if I can, let me serve you. I want to serve you and be a blessing to you. If I can have your hand here, dear, and let me give you a peanut butter and jam sandwich because right now I'm going to just show you what happens when I just completely disrespect order. Okay. I'm going to get all the ingredients in here. So here we go. Let's put some old jam in here. There oh. we go. Oh, look at you. Come on. I want to be generous. <laughs> I want you to get the blessing, sister. Come on, a little bit of peanut butter there. Oh, that looks good. You're getting me hungry. Come on. Her hand is looking rather disgusting, but I'm getting all the ingredients and now some bread, peanut butter and jam sandwich, right? Yep. And let's, lest we forget, here's a nice napkin for you. Oh, I can't turn your hand that way. There you go. Bless your heart. And God bless you. Go and enjoy your meal. Thank you so much. I even got peanut butter and jam all over me doing that. But did you see what I mean? Do you see? Look, I've seen kids under six do a better job of respecting the order of that principle when it comes to peanut butter and jam. You got to have the principle. Remember, wisdom is the principle thing. Get wisdom. Understand. What's it say? By wisdom is the house built. By understanding, it's established. By knowledge, it's filled. What did I do? Because you see, in life, we're so anxious to get the filling. Oh, I just, I want to get the stuff. I want to get the good stuff. It doesn't matter what we're talking about in life. It's like, I want to just get the good stuff. And we want to get the filling. 
and we have no principle, nothing to base it on. And in this case, you're making a peanut butter and jam sandwich and even six year olds know you start with the bread. You gotta have a foundation to your sandwich, right? I've seen you put one foot after another going to the stairs and accomplish what otherwise would be completely impossible. You go up 12 foot staircasing one step at a time. You might even be an older person and you may have a hip replacement and I've seen you do it. Go up the stairs one step at a time because when you respect process, the job becomes possible. You see, we, we seem to respect and celebrate order in so many things, but then God says, I want you to put me first. And then you know what we say? Well, God, I'm just so busy right now. Then God says, well, humble yourself so that I can exalt you, 1 Peter 5. But we say, well, God, first, how about you exalt me and then, then I'll do that whole humility thing. God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Isn't that what Jesus said in Luke 6, 38? He says, give and it shall be given. And we're like, okay, God, but you know, first I'll tell you what, before I, I'm, I don't have a lot of money, but first, if you help me win the lottery, then, then I'll start giving. Mm, I don't think so. God says, you know what? He says, keep intimacy inside the covenant of marriage. I want you to do that. Honor me and keep intimacy inside the covenant of marriage. You know what our society says? Our society says, you crazy, man. No way. You know, if it feels good, do it. God says, consult me in all of your ways. And you know what we do? We start texting. We start phoning. Well, how about I consult you, God, after I talk to Jimmy first? We'll see what he has to say about the matter. Look, when our marriages blow up, our businesses go bad, when we get sick in our bodies, when we get sick in our minds, and it becomes hopeless, we say something like, well, we've tried everything else. I guess maybe we should pray. Oh, Frank, has it come to that, that we're going to have to pray? You see, even when we pray, we can refuse God's wisdom. That's why I said so many people, they try to pray without wisdom and they just keep spinning their wheels. Wisdom is the principal thing. There's an order. Get wisdom, the wisdom of God, and then pray the wisdom of God. God our Father is trying to get His wisdom under us like a foundation of solid rock. Why? So that you can have a real life. You see, God loves you. You're his child and he wants you to have a life, a legacy. He wants you to be honored. Did you know that God wants you to have honor in your life? But that stuff is heavy and it needs a foundation. It requires order, wisdom first, understanding, and then knowledge. The invisible building blocks of life are essential to everything good and weighty in life and everything good is spiritually weighty and heavy. Proverbs 4 verse 7, again, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the foundational thing. Therefore, get your foundation under you. And in all you're getting, get understanding. See, there is a genius to the basics. That's why I want to bring you back to the basics. Wisdomology 101. Something as simple as order. Think about putting on your jeans today. When you put on your jeans, aren't you thankful that you put them on after you showered? And when you put your socks on, aren't you thankful that you put them on before you put on your shoes? See, that's just Wisdomology 101. But you need to apply it to the most important parts of your life. Your morality, your finances, how you love other people your entire being, your spirituality, your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. There are very basic component steps to the most complicated of networks, communities, and structures of life. These components may seem small, even invisible, but my friend, they're life altering. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And you must get them in the correct order. Because here's what happens if you don't. The world often will act like our great grandmother, even chase after the pretty tree in the middle of the garden, the tree of knowledge. And that mistake gets over and over. And we know what happens there. You end up dying from that mistake. Knowledge is the jam on top. It's the couch in the house. It's the paint on the wall. It's the knob. It's the poles. But without wisdom in place first, without the proper order of these things, all of these treasures become offensive to your life. You don't have a legacy, you have a tragedy. You chase a feeling and you end up with a fantasy. Your life becomes a bad, bad dream that devolves into your wicked reality. So do you wanna build a life today? A family, a future? Do you wanna have a legacy? 
please don't tell me that you show more respect for order when you're making a sandwich than when you're building your life, your home, your marriage, your family. Let me remind you again, Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a family, a home built. And by understanding, it's established on a sound and a good foundation. And by knowledge, its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. It's okay to want and even desire, verse 4. But remember, if you start filling your rooms that don't exist yet, you'll be repeating the sin of the Garden of Eden and compromising God's order and your future. God was trying to give Adam and Eve wisdom. The one, two, three steps, right? And instead they reversed the order and guess what happened? They lost the glory of God. They lost their identity. The first thing we all need to do is get our foundation, the rock to build on. Do you want to know how to do that? Receive Jesus, the embodiment of all God's wisdom into your heart. I love John 1.12 where it says, To as many as received Jesus, God gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become children of God. That is to those who believe, trust in and rely on His name. Wow. If you want to set the order straight in your life right now, don't be condemned. Don't let the, the condemnation of the past, don't let the voices of yesterday pull you backwards right now. Turn. That's what repent means. It means turn in the right direction and build on the rock, Christ Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Simple prayer. Just pray this. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your wisdom in my life. Forgive me of all my sins. You died on the cross for me. Rose up from the grave. I set my mind on your wisdom on your unfailing word in my life. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. In your name, Jesus. Amen.